What is it that motivates you to compose in principle? It's an urge. And an urge doesn't necessarily make you happy. Now, I'm not a smoker, but I can understand what it must feel like to be a smoker because uh, taking that puff in the doorway out in the street, um, I actually see some rather miserable-looking people. They kind of look furtive, you know, yeah. but they're doing something which is essential to them. And when I compose, that's me, um, that I'm doing something that I would feel bad about myself if I didn't do, but one is never satisfied with what one creates as a composer. I mean, it could always be better. And although I'm not like William Walton in that he would never part up with his pieces, he was constantly wanting to get them back and revise them, I tend to just say, well, I've written it and that's that. And if I was doing it again, I might do it differently. Mm -hmm. But one always has a sense of dissatisfaction. And so I suppose I'm just driven to do it because I think I was probably born to try and write music. You're making it sound like a, a curious combination of sort of addiction and affliction, almost. <laughs> but uh, is it is the business of creating these pieces, is, is that enjoyable? It's a good feeling when a piece is almost finished and the end's in sight. And I suppose the greatest reward is when people afterwards write and say that in some way it's touched their hearts, or maybe if they're carrying a heavy load, that it's in some way made that easier. Um, people sometimes towards the ends of their lives say that, um, you know, I'm here in a hospice and I found your music very comforting, or things like that. And I suppose in a way, that's what I'd like on my tombstone. You know, well, I suppose the first thing we'd all like is that he wrote like an angel. <laughs> we would always like to be praised for our professional skills, and I don't know whether I'll get that or not. But I suppose the other thing I would most like written on it is he touched people's hearts. 